Zone. It's Friday and it's Festool Live, everybody. Oh, wait a minute. This is pre-recorded. Oh, okay, whatever. This is our holiday season here in Indiana, and we want to wish you a happy holiday. But from the Festool Live crew family. So I'm going to start right over here with the most important person, Minnie Kleb. Happy holidays, everybody. Hi. She's our whiteboard expert. She writes where you're all from. Woot, woot. Right here is Brent Shively. He handles all the online chat. Happy holidays, everyone. <laughs> okay. Right here we have Big D. He's on the board. Come on, man. Happy holidays, everybody. Be safe. And, and over here, the man behind all of this, our executive producer and cameraman, Chris Seibert. Hello, happy holidays. So everybody, I always say, <laughs> yeah, you, you got it right this time. So hey, everybody, we want you to watch the best of during these three weeks. And once again, happy holidays. We love you and be safe this holiday season. Thank you and watch. See this button here? This is the go button, or the, oh, I'm sorry, the start button. When you turn this on, I'm going to press it. Just don't go like that. It doesn't come on. You've got to press it and wait for the beep. Now, you're going to come up here, and this is our first tool that we have a DRO or digital readout. You'll see how it's in red. You never, ever mess with anything on this machine until that turns to green. Okay, so some of the big questions I always get when we're do demoing, this, demoing this at big trade shows is, how long does it take to heat up? Eight minutes. What's the cleanup time? There is none. You just hit it like this. You can put it either into cool down mode or just get out of there mode. But I always put it in cool down mode. It prolongs the life of the motor. Okay, there's a trigger here. There's two speeds, fast and slow. And actually fast is pretty slow. But the reason you use slow is if, well, watch, I'll show you around here. Come on. See this radius right here? OK. I'll go fast here, and because it's on the trigger, I'll slow down to do the radius and then speed up again. That's why it's on the trigger. The confusing part of this machine is the trigger, because everybody thinks that's the go button. It's not. That's the go button right there. And you'll understand, as I go through this, what I mean by that. See the arrows? Watch. I'll cycle through. That's slow, and that's fast. OK, you have the amount of glue in this little scale. You have temperature range. You can set it at Celsius or Fahrenheit. And right here, with the amount of glue in here, I have 69 feet because this morning I set it for 3 quarter or 20 millimeter tape. We have four glue offerings. We have natural, dark brown, white, and black. Okay, so you can, you can really, actually this one's pretty popular uh, up in Canada. Anybody here play hockey? Never mind. Okay, <laughs> wait for it, wait for it. Okay, to change the glue, you see this green button? You hit it like that and what happens is it opens up and you just put a new puck in. You can change glue. Inside this pot, there's usually about three pucks in there. So if I need to change a glue color, and we did a video on that one already, you just take this out, if you can get this out, and then you get a cycle about three pucks through. Sometimes it's four, and you just drop it in, watch. You close it, and it automatically pressurizes there. Okay, and that's how you get started. It's pretty easy. And then it'll come up on a digital readout, and I'm going to cycle through that so we can see this. Stay right here with me, Chris. OK, so you see this button right here? It says Mode. How does that look in D? Good? good. OK, good. See how I hit Mode? OK, whatever's blinking, that's what I change. So I have two arrows. OK, now I can add more glue. There's, there, there it is in the middle. OK, if I have a really porous material, I can add a little more glue, or it depends, you know on what I'm applying. I'm going to do plywood. I usually do it one or two clicks before, and I hit OK. If I didn't hit OK, it would default back to the original setting. So I'm going to hit mode again. Let's see what's blinking. Oh, look, temperature range. OK, so it's 375. If I want to go a little bit lower, I can to 370. 
Okay, now when you're using the, the really thin PVC uh, banding, I wouldn't start at 375. I'd go down and I start, I usually do it at 355 because you'll bubble the tape. But you see how it went back to default range? Now, I'll hit it again. Well, let's look what's blinking. Fahrenheit. Okay, Fahrenheit, what do I want? Celsius? No. Okay, I can go to Celsius or whatever, or Fahrenheit. I'm going to go keep it at Fahrenheit. And then mode, I'm going to hit one more time. You're going to see feet or meters. And that's how much I have left in there to go. But I'm going to I'm gonna go back to feet and hit OK, and I'm ready to go. That's my gas tank right there. You do not put the feed roller here. You bring it out about an inch, and you hit the go button again. See this, Chris, right here? Look. There you go. Now you're going to start to see it feed out. Watch. And then I just put pressure. OK, see this? That's the fast mode. And as I go with this, you're just going to see I'm not killing it. I don't have to watch it. The machine is doing all the work. And the other thing is you notice I came off in the same plane. OK? This glue is EVA, ethylene vinyl acetate. Okay, it's the same glue that they use in the big machines. Okay, but I always point this out, and I said it already, there's no cleanup, there's no downtime with this. I could just hit this and walk away. Okay, but think about a big edge banding machine. Is it faster? Yeah, but it, they could be the size of this wall. All right, this is all the space it takes up. It comes in just a regular Sys4, right? Yeah, Sys4 sustainer. Okay, so think about that. Think about your shop space. If you're considering one of these for a shop, or think about it adding onto a larger edge bander that does inside and outside radiuses. You're talking about a huge amount of money, and how often do you do those? So say I have a vacuum clamp. I'm going to turn this on. I'll, just, I'll go over all of this momentarily. I'll, I'll go back, and I'll review it with you. Okay? But look. See this? <laughs> Look how it locks down, right? I release it with this foot pedal. OK, so I route this, right? And then I can come over here and look, flip it over while my router is still running. OK, and I can think about all the time you take right now clamping and unclamping a workpiece just to do a simple bullnose on something. This is the SE1, OK? It comes with a pod, a foot pedal, OK? and a vacuum pump, OK? Now, um, I know I have a, a new mic, and I know I have a tendency to shout, because this does make a little bit of noise. But it's only 55 decibels, OK? So it's a very quiet, va a very quiet vacuum pump. <coughs> OK, on the pod, right here. See this right here? This is what people miss on this. This is a gasket, OK? To engage the gasket, you'll hear it in a few minutes. OK, I'm releasing some of the, the, uh, the pull down. But as I push it up, what happens is I could take this pod and put it on any non-porous surface, and it sucks right down to it. The pod here will spin. You can lock it in with this knob. This is to spin the pod. This is where you engage it. You'll see this is kind of built up, so it creates a seal around the piece I'm locking down. You'll also notice this lever. This actually tilts the pod. So you can work at all different angles without releasing it. Now, <coughs> I want to point this out. This knob sometimes gets in, or this lever sometimes gets in the way. You'll notice that I could, it's spring-loaded. I could pull it and get more bite on it or more reference. Or if it gets in the way of a knob or something, I can move it out of the way. What if I have to clamp with the vacuum clamp a piece of wood like this? OK, see this? The gasket surrounds this, OK? And I'm just rotating that lever like this. Who says sanding something like this isn't comfortable, right? But what if I have a small, say I'm doing some rail and style stock with my domino, OK, and building something. See how the gasket doesn't surround this piece? So if we come in here, we have this kit, <laughs> all right? And you have these different profiles. OK, they're the different pods. You have this one, this size, this size. I don't remember the sizes, because I don't have to. I just customize the sizes like this. I go, yep, that one will work. What I want you to notice is this. You see the groove here? This is wicked important. See that? OK. What I'm going to do is I'm going to release it here. And Chris, hopefully we can come in here. See this right here? 
This is a little pin that I'm pulling out. That pin fits in the groove, and you'll see how this pops out. Okay? So, hopefully I'm not moving too quick. I'm going to put this in here like this. I'm going to take this, and listen, I'm going to push it in. That pin has now gone into the groove. Okay, so I'll leave that right there if you need a, another close-up of that. So now, if I need to work this, check it out. See this? Look. I can work that at any angle I want, okay? And it just makes it so comfortable. The ergonomics of it are perfect because I want you guys to see this. This really saves so much time. And you see how I'm just going right around there and it's following the template? And I wish you guys could see how perfect that came out to the template. So I'm going to take it one step further because this is really fun. Okay, now every once in a while you may get tear out depending on the grain. So you got to sand that on this edge, right? But you want to keep that edge crisp. So... I need to show you this because this is one of my favorite new tools we get. This is our, and I know it's an accessory, but I want to sand this edge because I did it earlier this week on this larger piece because I had a lot of sand, a sanding, mar uh, routing marks on there. And this new edge sander attachment is sweet. So I'm just going to take that get it in there. I've already preset this at 90. The settings right here at 90. Yes, we're going to do a Festool Live on this, um, but let me just swing this around, get it like this. And it doesn't matter what you're doing, okay, because this is a super versatile clamp, and I really... And as I come around, I don't know if you can see this, I'm looking right down in here, and that gives me, and I know we've called the Contoro the perfect edge, but I'm going to tell you something. This new edge sanding attachment with the ETS-125 and the ETS-125EC, okay, the cordless, this does give the perfect edge on there. The quick difference between the two, one comes in a maxi sustainer and one comes in this bag. The Planex EZ comes in a bag, and I'm going to open it up so you can see it. You can, there's some obvious differences, and then there's some subtle differences. So as I take it out, I'm going to set the bag over, okay, so we can compare them. Here is the, the Planex, and the obvious of the Planex, it comes in parts, okay? You have a power head where the sanding pad is. Where the motor is, it's a direct drive motor. Both systems are gear driven, okay? It comes with one extension, okay? And it comes, I call this the, uh, the control stick. The Plane XCZ is one solid system, okay? If we look at the motor here, we use our TEC EC technology, that's a brushless motor. Long wearing, don't need to ever change brushes. Here we have a brushed motor. <coughs> All right, uh, the brush on this is, this this has an amazing longevity on the brushes because they're really long, okay? It, it, they are long-wearing brushes. All right, so that's the difference. Uh, some people say there's more torque developed with this. I think they're about the same when I use them. Uh, but I'll be, I'll be featuring this pretty much all day because I really like this. It's just it's comfortable to use for me. Uh, is there a weight difference? That's not what somebody asks all the time. Not really. You really don't feel it. And, and, and hear me out on this. Uh, during demonstrations and using this, people ask me, well, how heavy is it? And if you put this in somebody's hand, they may say, and I've seen this all the time at trade shows, oh, that's pretty heavy. It's really not heavy because if I put that on the wall, the wall absorbs all the weight. So it's fairly light just holding it here. Okay, I thought I'd say that whether it's the Planex or the Planex EZ. You put your plug it cord in here, and here's what we call the claw. It locks on, watch, to the end of this hose. See it? This is a special hose for the Planex. It comes with, 
It comes with the CT36 Auto Clean. All right. Now, this is important because somebody will ask today, can I use the Plain X and Plain X EZ on this dust extractor? This one's coming out October 1st here in North America. This is our CT48 AC. It's our auto clean. You'll hear it today. We have time. I can, I can go over it, but we want to feature the Plain X. It comes with this hose. It's our anti static hose. Starts out at 36 and ends up at 32. Okay, but this is a HEPA filter system. Okay, so can you use it with the Plain X? Yes, but you should always use it, or I'll all say purchase it with this. Okay, or purchase it, then get this as an extra, be additional, I should say, because of this right here. If you use that hose on the Plain X, and this is a very common question. Okay, and I'll take it over to the easy. Come on over here, Chris, so we can see this. Okay, and I put it on here like this. Okay, over time, it doesn't lock on at all. Okay, this will fall off. It'll be kind of a pain. So I'll always recommend always an auto clean feature. One of our dust extractors, we have two now in the marketplace. Okay, if someone comes up and says, hey, can I use my regular CT dust extractor? I will always say, no, you'll be, these are the machines that, that actually get the dust and keep up with it because of the auto clean feature. Okay, so you're going to see that first wisp come off. That's because it's an automatic on off. And as I'm taking that off, this is coming off pretty daggone quick. Now remember earlier, and this is the full coverage on here. Okay, but you're going to see that just peel away. Now, remember I told you earlier, if I go like this, I'm going to hit here. So you walk toward the wall like this, and you can sand down below. Always, because that's a fully articulated head, and that will just follow the contour of the wall. If you walk close to the wall, not away from it. Okay, and it's that simple. And you know you just take your time doing this. But it's like, look at this, it's coming right off. It's like magic eraser. Okay, we're gonna come over here and you're gonna see this right off the edge. Okay, but I'm gonna come over. Now, here's what I'm gonna tell you. Derek, am I coming through okay with the audio? Okay, so here's Sounds the other good. thing I wanna tell you. Use half the pad, 50% of the pad, overlap, and then do your next stroke. That's another tip I can give you on this. That way there you maximize the dust extraction, okay? When you fold this up, it's such a compact piece of equipment, okay? And I call it a piece of equipment because I've been using this for about six, seven months, and basically I can't work without it now. So I store mine under my MFT, and I'm going to bring it out here because I've learned a lot with it. When I first started, it's locked together, and you'll see these, this tab right here. See how the, it's all locked together, okay? And when I first started transporting this, it would kind of tip on me. So here's, a, here's my first tip with this, okay? Check this out, okay? I roll it around, kind of like I call it the flying V, okay? To assemble it, it comes in a box. Assembly is wicked easy. It took me, I think, tops a half hour, all right? Now... It comes with four casters, okay? Two are non-locking, two are locking. And the reason I want to go through, with, through this with you is so when you put it together, you put it together once, okay? Now, these are tabs that you flip up, you'll, and I'll show you why you need those in a few minutes, okay? That's where I put the locking casters. Because when I set this up, and follow me on this one, Chris, okay? I need to adjust the height to this. Now, at home... I, I, when, this, when I open this up completely, I kind of leave it at this height. And the reason I do that is because it makes a great assembly table. Okay, say I'm banging some cabinets together, screwing them together. Look, top of my cabinet's right here. It's really perfect. The ergonomics on this are phenomenal. It adjusts in height all the way to 900 millimeters or 90 centimeters, okay, the height of the MFT at the top range. Okay, and I'll show you how to adjust it. You can adjust it in five different settings at two inch or 50 millimeter increments. Okay, so when I set this up, okay, what I'll do, or I, I always lock those front or the casters, okay, and it's just a, a 
press of your foot on the tab. And what I do is, because I want to make it easy, I just tilt it forward, and I want to show you. I put my foot right here. You got that, Chris? Okay? And as I tilt it forward, it eases it. And the one thing you're going to have to learn, there's all kinds of knobs on here. Some are spring-loaded, some lock, some don't. But this is a spring-loaded tab, and I, I want you to hear that. Hear that going in? Okay? Cool, huh? So I'm going to bring it all the way out. I'm going to make sure it's in that tab, and I'm going to do this one all the way out. Make sure it's in the tab. Then you can lock them in. Okay? I'm going to put my foot here, and this is just the process that I personally have learned, and it makes it wicked easy for me so it doesn't go flopping around. So now that I have it like this, I'm going to tilt it like this. Watch. And as I roll it back, whoopsie, I usually try to get my foot in there. I apologize about that. And obviously, I didn't lock this in that well. Okay, no worries. You'll see as I go through this. Okay, now I'm going to take this and move it all the way out, move it all the way out until I hear that pin lock. And then I'm going to put my foot here, and I'm going to tilt it out so it comes up just like this. Then I'm going to take this tab. Come in here, Chris, so you can see this, everybody. I unlock it right there. It makes it easy for you. Okay, so the next part is this. I'm going to expand it. <coughs> I'm going to pull this off, and I want you to see this bracket right here. Okay? In a little while, you're going to understand why I'm putting out the bracket. The bracket snaps right in. So I'm going to take it, and I'm going to release these casters, the locking casters. As I bring it out, you hear that snap. So what's happening is this is expanding, and you're going to hear I'm going to pull that tab and bring it all the way out. Now you take this one and put it right in. It's a push on, pull off. Okay, follow me so far <laughs> on this. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is here's another tab I'm going to pull out, and you're going to see how this rapidly expands. Okay, I'm going to pull it all the way out. There's a little tab. A gr I call it the grip tab right here, and you pull it out. Now, same thing over here. Watch. I'm going to pull this one out just like this, and this one just like this all the way out. Okay, so there you go. Everybody following? Okay, now you have these. These are a simple lock-in. You saw how one fell out because, obviously, I did not lock it in. And when I take this off, okay, you see this? Now, this is the, one of the pieces you got to assemble, and I want to coach you through on this one so you don't make the mistake I made. You see how this has a chamfer here on the top? That part goes on the top. When I first installed this at home, I did it upside down. And you just take the, the three screws and screw it in right there. But where this goes is right here in this area right here. I'll lock it in. Okay, and boy, you have one heck of a cutting station or assembly table. And I'm going to lock it there. Okay, I lock it in, and then I'm going to come back over. God, I love this thing. Okay, and watch. It becomes basically a panel lifter. So I'm going to come over here. Watch. And the, Chris, see if we can come in here to see this as I do this. Okay. See those two pieces right there? I just lift it like this. Now I'm going to get in your way. I lean it down. Chris, I'm going to get in your way here. I apologize. Okay, so processing a panel can basically be effortless because now I just grab these two pieces and watch. Or I can grab it just like this, and I can bring my panel perfectly where I want it, just like this. It comes with this hose. Now everybody will go, oh, that's a 36-millimeter hose. No, it's not. This one starts out at 32 and ends up at 36, okay? And I'll get into that later because almost all our CTs come with this hose. This is our 27 millimeter hose, okay? So I'm gonna set that over here. But remember, well, what I like about this is it has this outer uh, wrap, nylon wrap, which is really durable. So if you remember the old style hoses we have, 27 millimeters and 36, those had the ribs on it, okay? And it would be a catching point, and we would get the complaint. So we upgraded it last year to the flexible 27 millimeter and flexible 36 millimeter. Now 32 to 36, it's a tapered hose. The CT48 now has a HEPA filter, comes with it, that works with the AutoClean. If you had put a HEPA filter in here in the past, and you turned on the AutoClean, guess what? It would degrade the filter. 
It took us a little bit more research to make sure we had a HEPA filter that worked, that actually stood up to the pressure of the AutoClean's uh, bump of air, and we have. Okay, now, also here in North America, we have OSHA, and OSHA has Table 1 compliant. And <coughs> this gets you to that area with Table 1 compliant. You'll have to go on our web to see where it gets you with Table 1. But guess what? That's cutting concrete. That's grinding concrete. That's cutting the hottie board. Okay? And, and the CT AutoClean is compatible for all of that. So when you really look at it, you're out on a job site. Holy moly, man, you get the one-all, beat-all dust extractor for that. Okay, so when you see that, you see zero? That means off. Okay? Yes, you have the variable suction. That is really needed, uh, okay, when you're, sa I think, sanding, okay? But see this right here? See where it says one? We used to have a variable uh, switch here, knob, where you could, the frequency, you could vary the frequency. Now it's just on or off. So I'm going to put that on. Now, as you see this, Chris, pan up for a second. Every 10 seconds, you're going to hear a pop. Okay, whoa. Ooh, that scared me a little. Okay, so you hear that? Now, if I put it on auto, when I plug a tool into this, okay, every 10 seconds, you will hear a pop. Okay? And what that pop is, hear me out on this. I want to show you. A lot of people thinks it's some, think it's something mechanical hitting the filter. No, it's a burst of air. So when I take this apart, you'll see it. You'll see this pot right here. It looks like a butterfly, okay? On the back of it is a steel plate, and there's a spring right here. And right here is an electromagnet, okay? So every 10 seconds, we pulse it with our electronics, and that pulls that up. So what you're hearing now, now listen to this. I'm going to turn it back on so you can hear it, okay? Like a dust extractor in the Festool lineup, what you're hearing is the high pressure. If I covered this up like this, okay, it's going to raise the pressure. So you're creating that high, that turbine inside is creating high pressure. The bottom of the tub is low pressure, your vacuum, okay? And every 10 seconds, we're sending a burst of air, I mean a, a pulse, to lift that up so the high pressure goes on top of the filter like this. It goes like this. It's not, it's... There's nothing hitting it. It's a burst of air, okay? Hopefully, you understand what AutoClean is now. See this right here? See where it says AutoClean? We suggest this. When you're using a plain extra sand and drywall, even concrete, every 15 seconds, or I'm, I'm sorry, every 15 minutes, you toggle it. And what that does is you'll hear that burst of air. There's three bursts, okay? When you're using it with the, the plain X, you know you sand it with a plain X? 15 minutes of sanding, come over here and go like this and do your cleaning mode. This is the 27, let's hear that again. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna hook the 36 millimeter to that. Okay, let me just take these two tabs, I pull them forward, I pull this out. Okay, good, I got that. By the way, you would hook this to one of the wands. Okay, this is, a, this is a, basically a beta brush. But let's put the new hose on there. Let's see if this one's hooked up. It is. I got so many remotes in here, I don't know which one I'm going to turn on. Okay, so let's do this. Let's put this on here. Okay. I got the right hose here. Now listen. Remember what the other one sounded like. Okay, wait till I hook this up. You hear the difference? So think, man, you're really driving this. Okay, so always remember this. Okay, and then I'm going to take it one step further. That's a lot of air you're pulling through, right? Okay, and you hook it up to the small surface area. That's really going to pull down, right? Make sure when you put one of these on and you're sanding to reduce potential swirl max, okay, turn the suction down and you'll have a perfect experience with it.